Hello, Power Apps Makers. This is Ahmed Saleh again, and today we are continuing to the second episode of the Dynamics 365 Finance and Operation and Power Apps Integration. Last episode, episode one, we have stopped in this place here where we have embedded a Canvas app, landscape Canvas app, into the All Customers page in the Dynamics 365. So what we're going to do today is two things. So the first thing we're going to learn about what is the D365 data entities concept and what are these entities versus tables in Dynamics 365 database, how we are going to use these entities and why we need to use them in the Power Apps. And then from there, we're going to do a quick uh, uh, show of how we can pass context variable or parameters from a page uh, in Dynamic 365 as an input that we can consume in the Power Apps site to start our process or our presentation or our visualization or any kind of data manipulations in our Canvas app from the Power App side of things. So let's get started right here. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to need to talk about what we call it D365 data entity. And the data entities is basically a conceptual abstractions that encapsulates a set of related tables, physical tables, in the uh, uh, Dynamic 365. These physical tables cannot be consumed or we cannot interact or integrate with external uh, systems. In this case, it's going to be Power Apps. So if you want to update a record, you cannot directly go and update the physical record in D365. You have to use those entities that uh, uh, provided either out of the box or out of the pond in Dynamic 365, or you, we have to build entities using Visual Studios so we can map these uh, different columns from different tables in one place, and we can use that entity for data manipulations and exporting and importing data from the Dynamic 365. Okay, so when we are using data entities, again, it's data access, so data entities can provide, retrieve, read data, from D365 for reporting, analysis, or integration with other systems, external systems. Data manipulations, uh, we can also use these data entities to write data back into D D365, as we mentioned, from external systems. Here we have an example of the structure uh, of the data entities. So again, we have logical representation. When we have a data entity that represents a logical view of one or more physical tables in the Dynamic 365, like in this example, we have a customer table, we have a party table, we have an address table, we have electronic address, and so on and so forth. So we want just one record for a customer to include data columns or data fields or data elements from multiple other tables, physical tables. And this is where we actually have this kind of normalized model, right? This is what we have right here. Now here, when we build our entities, basically our entities will, for example, is gonna be called customer. It will have all these columns that map from those different tables. And then we have this entity. It's kind of like a logical view, but again, it's not the, normal concept of view that you can only view data. No, actually, this is actually a functional view that where you can query uh, uh, to change data, uh, to do full CRUD operation, create, read, update, or delete on that view, which in the back end of Dynamics, it will go ahead and uh, implement that the change that happened to this view, to this entity, back to the source tables where you are mapping these different uh, uh, data data elements. Now, going back to our use case, as we said, I want to go actually inside one of those customers pages, and in this pages, I in this page of this specific customer, I want to go ahead and actually add um, a Canvas app here. Uh, as you can see, that we have all these information about this customer, and to get to a specific set of information, you have, as you can see here, you need to go for a specific, you know, tab uh, to get certain kind of information, and sometimes you need like snapshots. For example, like I just need very specific information about this customer, like in case how many invoices they have it's due, for example, or uh, how how many paid invoices, and what is the total amount of. Uh, um, 
you know, uh, invoices that is being paid for us or uh, what is the address or the shipping address or bank information of this customer payment information. So just very specific snapshots of information. You can even add some kind of reporting capabilities that you want to see certain kind of visuals, right? So this is where we're going to do. Uh, we want actually to open an app from here. And in that app, basically, we want to see information about this specific customer that called Active Transport INC, right? So to do that, uh, we know that we can add an app by basically the name of the app. And remember, from the last episode, we have to add or insert the app ID, right? So we will do this. Uh, but here is going to be what we are talking about today, which is the input, as you can see here, the input context for the app. And this is basically what is the context variable concept that we use update context for. If you understand this function, how it works in the Power FX in Power Apps, it's basically we are passing one parameter that you can pass from here to the Canvas app, so we can get information about this customer. In this case, we are passing the customer account, uh, basically number, which is as you can see in this number here, but. Let's actually to test while you are building the app. So I'm going to copy this uh, account number and I'm going to go to my app. And this is my app here. So I have two screens, as you can see, I have screen all customers. And this is the screen that show when you open this app, for example, in our case, in the all customer page, and I created another screen that uh, could be obviously a separate app that it's only going to pass the information of one customer that we would like to see the information in this edit form control but in my app dot start or on start property this is where we are capturing basically the parameter that is going to be passed from the dynamic 365 to us so basically using the famous condition here if it's not blank the parameter that is passing and this is the name in the new version uh, so it's the cmp so if it's not blank, then we are setting a global variable using the set function here to take the value in that case. And if it's blank, then I want to just have this static value for now so we can actually start testing. So I have this customer number or account number right here. So I'm going to go ahead and run the on start of the app. And when we do that, obviously now we have a specific customer that we already ran the information for. So we should get the information of the customer with the account US underscore SI002, as you can see here. And here we have the information of this customer, as you can see right here now, right? Perfect. So we have the information of this. So I'm going to go ahead and save and publish again. The only thing we did so far is we are setting the variable or the global variable of fin ops input to a set of value. But once we start actually embedding this app into the Dynamic 365 and run the app from Dynamic 365 on the app, when the app start, this formula is going to run and passing that parameter that we want, which is the account number. So I'm going to go ahead and publish this application. For now, I'm going to go ahead and uh, get the information of this app. In this case, I would like to get the information, uh, which is the app ID, right? That's what we are looking for. Perfect. From here, it's easy. Actually, I can get the app ID. As you can see, uh, this is just uh, a short pass for you. So I can get actually the app ID from here. So if I just copy, this is where we have the app ID. As you can see here before, I used to go to the details of the app. I can just copy the app ID from here. It's actually starting with uh, 2D. Okay, so it's not that this is this is basically a character in the URL. It's actually the 2D uh, 25. It's basically forward slash. So percentage 2F. It's like forward slash, and I'm taking the basically the app ID from after that, going to the back video or previous video, the first episode, you can easily get the ID by going to the app canvas app details page and then get that ID. I'm going to copy this right here and then going back to the uh, uh, dynamic 365 and inside here, I'm going to go ahead and add an app and then I will call it canvas power apps customer. And then I will give it the app ID 
right here and then what we are going to pass you click on this drop down and then i want to actually look for the obviously the account number right the account number remember we don't know if you don't know which column is really holding that account number that we want to use and this is something that you can do by uh, if you remember that we have the url of our dynamic 365 instance if you put there and then forward slash we have the customer top 10 records and if you can see here this is the name okay that's the column name customer account where we can have the account number so here I will go ahead and click here. I want to just go ahead and search by contain. I would like to put the word account. And if we scroll down, we will find customer account. As you can see here, this is the customer account. So I'm going to click on this. That's the account number, right? From here, you can see this is the customer account, which is the account number that we would like to pass. And then I will click insert. Now, if I go ahead and open this app that we just added, it's loading the second page, which in this we are specifically using in this gallery. And this is where we're going to go to the second page. As you can see here, what I'm doing here, I'm filtering the customer table or the customer entity using the account number that is getting the value. As you can see here, we have the value of our global variable which is in this case is going to be the customer account number, right? So if we're going to go back actually and try to use another customer, so let's go to another customer, Alpine Ski House, open the app. We will have again, this is the main screen, but we are going to specific customer. We have Alpine and this is the information of this customer right here. And again, from here, you can get anything else that you want to actually customize for the end users of the Dynamic 365. When they go and access the customer, they can have this application where actually can streamline certain kind of process uh, in one place that you can have full type of customization just by embedding a Canvas app. Uh, to conclude with this again today, everything that we did, it was on the app on start property where we can actually capture the passing parameters or context variable from Dynamics 365. And to do that in the Dynamics 365 or what you have to do, add an app, you need the app ID from here and then you give it a name and then you pass the parameter that you would like to pass from here. To know what kind of column that what kind of table that you are working on this is what you need to go back to episode one to know how we get this kind of a data or data information so we can know what columns that we can use to pass certain kind of information if needed um, or you know primary keys foreign keys exactly something that you can use to start looking into all these kind of different entities in your power apps uh, development uh, portal Thank you so much and I will see you in the next video of this series.